So Google dorks are these cool search advanced operators used on the Google search engine to find things like websites, files, or even databases that aren't intended to be publicly available. Combining keywords and key phrases, the world is your oyster and the things you can find are just unbelievable. So on today's episode, we're going to go through and show about seven or so of these Google dorks and how you can use them in your research. Starting off the list, we're going to start talking about discovering documents hosted online. So in the search bar, you can enter the subject's name as well as the file type colon and then the file extension things like file type colon pdf or file type colon xlsx or and you can actually chain these together you can kind of find a bunch of different things online uh example would be things like commencement speeches if someone graduated from a school and you were like wanted to be 100 percent sure that they graduated there for things like OSINT. um if you wanted to do things like file resumes resumes are crazy because they have things like contact information sometimes people accidentally slip up and put information and then they probably shouldn't uh enterprise uh software suites what have you um i mean this is a, a plethora of different things you can find online and again, it's just kind of how you posture your question as well as like the things you're looking for. Next one is Zoom videos. So the term like Zoom drops or Zoom buys was this really popular kind of like prank you could pull like in the 2020 era. Now this one's not as useful just because like at, by the time a website has been indexed, uh, the meeting's most likely over. But if you had something like a turnover chat or something that's like reoccurring and it was the same, you know, room or the room was left open, someone didn't exit out of the room, they didn't close it out. Uh, bad practice, but if that was the case, you could theoretically just jump in these. And if they're not password protected, you can kind of see where this is going. Uh, this is a very common thing. It was very prevalent. And while it may not be as common now, it's not impossible that you couldn't jump into these. So by simply using things like in URL colon zoom dot US slash J and index, or I'm sorry, in text scheduled for, you can kind of just jump around and see this. And, and again, you know, it's, it's kind of not cool to just jump in and disrupt someone's Zoom meeting, but then this could be a friendly reminder to them that this is a, a better way to do things. And maybe maybe when I shut down your meetings when they're done or put a password on them, just kind of be a little bit more, you know, security focused. Email list. Now, this is actually a really easy to, one to do and it's very useful. And this one has a lot of different angles for use case. You know, if you wanted to maliciously gather an email list so you can start sending things to folks, if you're a content developer trying to get their start and you want to start shooting off people, course invites or discounts to merch. Uh, by going into things like file type colon XLS and URL quote email.xls. This is going to look for any type of file that's again saved on a database that's just saying hey this is an email or email list in a Excel document format. A step further you can dig into things like site colon dot edu file type colon xls in url colon email dot xls and again this is the same concept but this is now for something that's aimed more toward like education uh, college school what have you so this is where you can start seeing things in a, a sector for, for again different use case if you're if you're a pen tester or you know doing your reconnaissance osent this could be very useful. And again, the, the power that really comes from these Google dorks is just the unlimited combination you can add to these. You know, spammers know this trick too, and in doing this on a daily basis, you can kind of build and grow spamming email lists. Blog files are the perfect example of why and how this sensitive information gets let out. Um, if you don't have your database locked up and individuals are able to access not only that, but also the log files to your important appliances or your servers or machines, you you can kind of see where this goes downhill really quick. Um, things like the uh, uh, you know access logs or any type of application logs are often discovered inside of the public HTTP space of websites, and this can help attackers you know find the PHP version that you're running, as well as critical system paths or CMS or frameworks or, or anything, right? So this can be combined with a couple different things like all in text or file types, uh, and this will show a lot 
of stuff to include things like usernames uh, inside of all of the .l you know log files. env files are the ones that are used to declare like general variables when it comes to these uh, web development frameworks. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of devs who just don't care about how they do this, and they insert their env files in their main public website directories. So doing things like db underscore password file type colon env, you'll kind of notice that there's the chance of unencrypted passwords, usernames, and their IPs that are directly exposed in this search result. You don't even need to click on the actual Google dork. You can just see it in the search results and just jot your notes there. It, <laughs> it can't be any easier. Now the last one I want to bring up for like the cybersecurity aspect of these Google dorks are vulnerability search results or these vulnerability scans. You know, you, you, you have tons of these, you know, um, pen tests or audits or what have you, VM teams even, who will go through and they'll, they'll compile all the problems in someone's environment and then they'll not lock it down. They'll just leave it on the database. They'll shoot it off as an email, like that's not encrypted. Um, the, the person who is managing these or whatever, they're just publicly available with these Google dorks. And I promise you, you you'll be surprised when you type in this Google dork, it's, it's gonna be in title, quote, report, and then you're gonna do a parentheses and wrap any of the uh, types of these uh, scanners in it. And then you're gonna do a file type colon HTML. Um, again, these are going for like, the more famous scanners. And if you know like some of the, the you know, the third party names, just plugging them into that dork will allow you to see those if they are available on the database in the HTML format. If you do the file types and treat it to PDFs or what have you, you might be able to see them there too. But again, this is crazy because if you were looking to get into someone's environment and you saw in the vulnerability scan that they were using older versions of an operating system or older versions of software that has these exploits or vulnerabilities available you can see where you go you know there's just so many different opportunities to just attack and it's ridiculous and this last one is not even a, like a security one as I mentioned this one is just having better Google photo results so if you've ever gone through uh, Google images you'll see that like a lot of the images when you go to right click and save as they're not actually picture files and that's because Pinterest is one of the largest like SEO scams in the sense that they aggregate other people's photos they then attach things like metadata on top of them and then what you're actually seeing is like almost like a shortcut to a picture and so it's this weird like catch and grab and they're getting the results and they're kind of pointing a lot of traffic at their own site so what you can do is just add minus site colon Pinterest Dot com uh, to any of your search uh, uh, image searches and it will actually minus or mitigate subtract Pinterest from your search results so that one is for free you're welcome so as you can see the Google search uh, can be manipulated with this Google hacking or these Google dorks to, to be really powerful right and you saw from like anything like red team stuff to like just general cybersecurity image searches even uh, there's a lot of really cool things you can do now if you're getting into more of like the OSINT research if you're trying to get that more investigative style you can watch this video right here and get some really useful stuff in that particular field. So thank you very much for watching. Please consider liking and subscribing. And if you haven't already, hit that little bell icon so you can see our next videos when they pop up. Thank you very much and have a good one.